Today, my name is Zia Kreitzer, and I will be using this video to introduce and navigate the floral website my partner Mark Matsunyonya and I created for the plant systematics course at the University of Guam. Due to the current COVID situation, it was decided that only one individual was necessary to present in order to continue practicing safe social distancing. Now, during the first lecture of the course, our professor Dr. Zhao spoke of plant blindness. Plant blindness is a term that describes the phenomenon of underappreciating or even truly seeing the floral around us. While the term was new to us, the phenomenon has been going on for a while and it is increasing exponentially. It is our intention to combat plant blindness on Guam and encourage the local community to learn more about our natural surroundings. To achieve this, we collected data on majority of the native plant species and developed a website with detailed information and photos of each species. The easy-to-use website was designed for all ages to encourage the shared, knowledge, a shared, a shared wealth of knowledge of Guam's flora. Now, In our initial project, we were going to create a similar website but focused specifically on flora in the top three hikes of Guam. We chose Pocket Caves, Tarzan Falls, and Sigua Falls to collect data on multiple species across different habitats. Unfortunately, we were only able to do one hike before the COVID outbreak, so we had to alter our original idea. Now, I want to bring us to the Excel sheet that we've been working on. So instead of listing all the species found in the top three hiking locations, we decided to focus solely on uh, native species because obviously we can't travel to these locations. So therefore, adding to the data and photos that we collected during our trip to Pocket Caves, we added to the list of all the native species we could find and inquired information and inquired information from relevant resources such as Stone, Rollerson, and Lauren Gutierrez. And furthermore, we broke up the species into different growth patterns like trees, shrubs, lianas, vines, herbs, and epiphytes. We were not exactly sure how much information we would initially include on the website, but to ensure we covered all ends, we collected extra data on biotic and abiotic factors. So as you can see here, we have soil, canopy cover, humidity, also the different pollination and seed dispersal modes, including known pests to the species. Now, all of those that I just mentioned are not currently include on the, included on the website, but now that we have this um, uh, nice spreadsheet put together, we can easily add it to the website as we see fit in the future. And speaking of the website, let's go ahead and bring her up. So our website is called Guam Native Herbology. We understand now that herbology is the study of herbs and its medicinal properties, but we did not realize that during the time of selecting the name, and for that we apologize. This is our home, let's go to our homepage, I'm sorry. So this is our homepage, um, and right there we see some flowers of our local ephit. And as we scroll down, um, we have a, uh, a little summary of about Guam and also on the bottom we have a short text on our intentions behind the website which is to combat plant blindness and just to summarize what we have here about Guam it's just talking about where we're located on, on the island chain and how our prime location brings in not only tourism, but also uh, military throughout history. And considering our size, our small size, we also are home to a bunch of d unique plant and wildlife species, but due to overdevelopment and our ongoing issues with brown tree snakes, a lot of those species are considered threatened and endangered. Now let's adjust our eyes to the top menu bar and it is broken down between the categories that I mentioned earlier, trees and shrubs, lianas, vines, epiphytes, and ground herbaceous species. Now let's first open up trees and shrubs. Now within this page, we have over 60 different plant species. That's right, 60. I think that's 60. I believe the name, the number comes out to a little less than 80 plant species. And we have photos for each of those. And under the photos, 
um, has a link to a page specifically for those species. So let's go back to top, the top and let's open the first link, which is for Aglaea. And on each of these pages, these spe specific um, species specific pages, we have some basic information. The basic information includes family, common name, tremor name if they have any, status, whether it's endemic, endangered or threatened, and habitat. Habitat can include limestone, clay, uh, backshan, etc. And also we have multiple photos of species and we tried to select photos that would depict the species as best as possible, um, meaning that we tried to do some for like buds, flowers, leaves, etc. So like for here, for example, we have here the terminal leaves, some buds, and fruits. And on the bottom for the caption, we tried to um, uh, we tried to list out where we got the photos from. And if um, we did not have the photos personally and we outsourced them, that would also meant that would also be mentioned on the captions. And let's go back. I want to select another species just to showcase something else. So we'll go to Disco Calyx Megacarpa, um, along with different photos of like the fruits and um, trees, barks, and seeds. We also have some photos of the different growth rates. So right, you see here we have a sapling of Disco Calyx because sometimes when you're out in the field you don't, you know, you see like a small sapling or seedling and there's no adult tree around. Um, and so there's no adult tree around to ID them. So sometimes the seedling or sapling is all you have. So we tried to include some of these photos uh, to make it easier for you to key out once you've taken that photo and you get back home and want to figure out that species. Now we'll go to Liana. Now everything after trees and shrubs, like vines, lianas, epiphytes, and herbaceous species, we did not have the time to create separate pages for each of the species, so all the basic information is listed right underneath the photos. Um, we do have all that inf you know, we do have all the info, so we would like to, in the future, possibly make those um, separate pages. But for right now, we only have a single photo, and then the basic information underneath. And then we have some vines, and it's a pretty short list of vines, but um, I'd like you to keep in mind that Guam has a bunch of vines on Guam. But, you know, you have to remember, but, you know, I would like to encourage you to remember that we are only trying to showcase um, native, vine, native species. Um, you can check out other resources which we have here on the website, which I'll show later, which shows a bunch of different invasive vines. So epiphytes, epiphytes, we know them as ferns and orchids. And what we have here are mainly um, orchids. And the orchids that you see, and we eventually are going to put like orchid, um, like the flower photos, because those are better indicators of trying to determine which orchid you are looking at. Now, if you see these orchids out in the field, count yourself as lucky because they, some of these are considered very rare and also restricted to certain locations. And last but not least, we'll go over to ground cover and herbaceous species. And this is a similar format to the other pages we were just looking at. Now, all this information um, we gathered from mainly from stone and Rollerson, but we did source a lot of our information from other places as well, which can be found here in references. It's a pretty hefty list, but they're all equally important. So if you ever need to get some further details other than the basic information that we have listed on this website, please feel free to look at our reference page. And our last page I want to show you, which is um, pretty fun is our online resources. Now these online resources um, have two different lists. One is basically for photos and the other one is like agriculture resources. Um, and so 
we wanted to provide this page, um, you know, just to encourage more further explanation into the world of local botany. I, lo I mentioned Lauren Gutierrez several times in this presentation, and I want to just showcase her Flickr real quick just to give you a little insight on what she has put together. And she, and while our website is focused on native species, she actually has a bunch of, she has it all. So, and she has albums for every species and go to Aglaia one more time. And, you know, like, we, and we were trying to mimic her as basically having an adult tree, you know, photos of adult trees, a bark, some leaf patterns, whether it's alternate or opposite, and seeds, and so forth. Um, and then a few other Instagrams. Um, May I as well, this is actually an Instagram that I ran myself. Uh, Marianne's Wild is not only about flora, but it also has some um, wildlife, and it's the same kind of format that we have on the website. Basically, it's status, where it's from, uh, where it's grown, and all that. And, you know, it's also, you know, it's not only beneficial to know about native species, but it's also beneficial to learn about our invasive species. So I also put a link to our Guam invasive species, and this Instagram is is great. If say you know you see a plant species out there and you're not sure if it's native or invasive, this is a great resource to check out. And here I'm sure we all know what this is. This is um, our bougainvillea flower, our native flower, um, but maybe most of you might not know that it's actually an invasive. But you know, as Dr. Shaw says, who cares as long. It's pretty as long as you control it, right? Now, and then on this side, we have more of the agriculture publications and posters, and a lot, and all three of them are from the, are resource from resource from UOG. Now, as far as um, promoting our site during this COVID virus, we we're only able to do it at a limited range by sharing through friends and family online, but um, we would, in the future we would like to include a list of hikes with GPS locations of focal species, and then with that information we can link up with other sites such as Guampedia and Stars and Stripes um, to share our website. The reason why we chose these two sites is because they receive a high rate of online traffic regarding hiking. I know I've used their, their site several times to find certain hiking locations. And then from, you know, from there, hikers can then use the website as a simple online field guide to the plants they see on their treks. And with that, it's our hope that by having the site at the palm of their hands, people would be encouraged to take the time to look around them every now and then, taking their surroundings, and ultimately do away with plant blindness. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our video, and hey, next time you're out there, let us know what you see.